So beginning up in the cervical spine with contributions from the C1 and C5 all the way through C5 uh, nerve roots, we have the cervical plexus. Um, also contributing to the cervical plexus is a branch of cranial nerve 12, the hypoglossal nerve. And the cervical plexus is buried deep in the neck underneath the sternocleidomastoid muscle. And as I said, it's composed of the ventral primary rami of cranial nerve 12 uh, and then C1 through C5. And most of the branches uh, of the cervical plexus are sensory nerves, cutaneous sensory nerves that supply the dermatome uh, from the skin of the neck, from the skin of the ear area, from the skin on the back of the head and small portions of the skin uh, over the shoulder. And also uh, some of the branches, a, a much lesser uh, percentage of the branches, uh, are motor branches that innervate muscles of the anterior neck. So for example, uh, the infrahyoid muscles such as the omohyoid, the ho oh crap, the omohyoid, the sternohyoid, and the sternothyroid muscles uh, are served by some of the up upper uh, C1 through C3 nerve roots. Uh, some of the deep muscles of the neck, such as the geniohyoid and the thyrohyoid, uh, the scalene muscles, uh, some of the lev portions of the levator scapulae. Uh, and even portions of the trapezius and sternocleidomastoid muscles in conjunction with uh, cranial nerve number 10, the accessory nerve, uh, are all served by uh, the cervical plexus. And then as I alluded to earlier, uh, C3 through C5 combine to form the phrenic nerve, uh, which serves uh, the diaphragm muscle and that is uh, the sole motor innervation of the diaphragm muscle comes from uh, the cervical plexus uh, and the phrenic nerve. Um, continuing downward, then as we continue down the cervical spine we see the cervical spine nerve roots C5, C6, C7, C8, T1 and then also uh, occasional contributions also from C4 and T2 gives us the brachial plexus. And so let's spend some time here uh, now on the brachial plexus. Uh, the brachial plexus is situated uh, partly in the neck and then partly also in the axilla. Uh, gives rise to virtually all the nerves that innervate the upper extremity and we're going to be talking about those as we go here specifically focusing on the median, ulnar, and radial nerves. Um, the brachial plexus is formed by the uh, anterior primary rami again C5 through uh, T1 with occasional contribution from C4 and uh, also from T2. Now, after the nerve roots come off the spine, uh, the nerve roots of C5 and C6 join together or fuse. The nerve root from C7 continues unfused. And then the nerve roots from C8 and T1 fuse. And those form in sequence the superior trunk, the middle trunk, and the inferior trunk. So the superior trunk is C5 and C6 combined into one contained uh, sheath. It's called the superior trunk. The middle trunk is all C7. The inferior trunk is combined uh, of C8 fibers, T1 fibers, and then occasionally contribution from T2. So here we see five to six to seven individual nerve roots coalescing and combining into a reduced number of three uh, trunks. And it's in the trunks that we see our first mixing and mingling of nerve roots. And uh, 
and and with the superior trunk we're mixing C5 with C6 nerve roots and the inferior trunk we're mixing uh, C8 and T1 uh, uh, nerve roots. Well the trunks then immediately uh, divide. So we have five nerve roots, five to seven nerve roots coming in to form three trunks and then the three trunks immediately divide into two. Each trunk divides into two. They divide into two divisions. And each trunk has both an anterior division and a posterior division. So bear with me now and follow along. The superior trunk divides into an anterior division and a posterior division. The middle trunk divides into an anterior division and a posterior division. The inferior trunk divides into an anterior division and a posterior division. So we have five to seven nerve roots that combine to form three trunks. The three trunks then subdivide, each trunk divides twice into an anterior and posterior division. So three trunks give us six divisions. The six divisions then undergo combinations to give us three chords. Did you follow that? Five roots gives us three trunks, gives us six divisions. Now the six divisions, there's two categories of divisions. There's anterior divisions and posterior divisions. So that's six mixing and mingling uh, groups of nerve root fibers. <coughs> These six divisions then condense into three chords. And then the three chords then uh, either combine or divide or continue on to give us the five uh, major named nerve roots of the upper extremity, that being the axillary nerve, the musculocutaneous nerve, uh, the median nerve, the radial nerve, and uh, the ulnar nerve. Now, the chords, there's three chords. There's, uh, there's a lateral chord, there's a posterior chord, and there's a medial chord, and those chords are named in relation to uh, their position relative to the axillary artery. So, of course, the posterior chord is posterior to the axillary artery. Medial chord is medial to the axillary artery, uh, etc. And then all along the chords, uh, several smaller nerve branches uh, branch off and these are named peripheral nerves such as the upper subscapular nerve, the thoracodorsal nerve, the lower subscapular nerve and these supply muscles and skin of the shoulder uh, and also the superior part of the thorax. Okay, for those of you that have the PowerPoint, I have a diagram here of the brachial plexus, which I had to search far and wide for uh, a good diagram that gave a good uh, representation of the mixing and the mingling <coughs> of the nerve roots. And what's amazing to me is, and I could stare at this picture all day, is that we start out with five nerve roots and let's just call them the nerve roots from C5 through T1. Uh, five different nerve roots. <coughs> Excuse me. And by the time we get out to the named peripheral nerves we find that some of the fibers for example from the C5 nerve root those C5 nerve root has given contribution to all of well, all of the uh, named peripheral nerves, with the exception of the ulnar nerve. I shouldn't say all. I should say four out of five. So C5 uh, contributes to the axillary 
nerve, contributes to the musculoscutaneous nerve, contributes to the median nerve, contributes to the radial nerve. And that's just, a, a, that's amazing to me. And what we're seeing here is that these nerve fibers have migrated embryologically with the dermatome, the myotome, and the sclerotome to, to parts far and wide, you know, to parts of the body f uh, as near as the deltoid muscle and as far as uh, muscles in the hand. For example, the lumbrical muscles have contributions uh, from C5. And that's an example of how uh, the nerve fibers migrate along with uh, the dermatome, the myotome, and the sclerotome. And by the time these uh, nerve fibers get out in the periphery, they have to return back to the spinal cord in, in different bundles. And we call those different bundles, uh, and those multiple bundles, we call those the named peripheral nerves, the, the median nerve, the ulnar nerve, the radial nerve. That's what we call these bundles that carry these contributions uh, from these five nerve roots originating from the cervical spine. And I have another diagram here for you, those of you that are watching the PowerPoint presentation, uh, which is uh, in color. And again, it shows uh, a, a very good depiction of how the nerve roots uh, get mixed. And we have to bear in mind that the, there's mixing not only of motor nerve roots, but also of sensory. Uh, I shouldn't say nerve roots. I should say motor fibers and sensory fibers. And for those of you that are uh, watching the PowerPoint, um, it shows here the uh, five nerve roots, each one starting out as a different color. For example, C5 is, is uh, depicted in red. Well, if you, face, if you trace red all through the mixing and uh, matching uh, and combining of nerve roots through the trunks, divisions, and the cords, and ultimately into the branches, you see that their red, C5, uh, contributes to many of the named peripheral nerves. Similarly, C6 contributes to uh, all but the ulnar nerve. C7 contributes to all but the ulnar nerve. C8 contributes to uh, both the radial and the ulnar nerve. T1 contributes to uh, the radial nerve and the ulnar nerve. And so the brachial plexus is really a way that nerve fibers uh, leave and return to the spinal cord from parts far and wide in the upper extremity as those parts far and wide uh, have migrated from the original segmental level. Now uh, only to return through various cords and bundles that we call uh, the named peripheral nerves. So the posterior cord uh, of the brachial plexus is formed by the three posterior divisions of the trunks. Recall that there was three, three trunks, a superior, a middle, and an inferior trunk. And then those each divided into uh, anterior and posterior divisions. Those posterior, anterior and posterior divisions then recombine into cords and one of which is the posterior cord, which lies posterior to the axillary artery. That is formed from the three posterior divisions of each of the trunks. Those all combine to form the posterior cord. Well, that only leaves then the anterior divisions of the three trunks. And the lateral cord is formed from the anterior divisions of the upper and the middle trunks. And the medial cord is simply a continuation of the anterior division uh, of the lower trunk, or the inferior trunk, which is uh, comprised of uh, contributions from both C8 and T1. 
So that's the brachial plexus, and that's going to be uh, the focus of our discussion here today. We now know how the uh, named peripheral nerves of the upper extremity uh, are formed. We know that uh, each of the named peripheral nerves of the upper extremity have contributions from uh, two or more spinal nerve root segments. We know that uh, the spinal nerve root nerve fibers uh, migrate far and wide to innervate multiple areas of skin, multiple muscles, and multiple uh, bones and joints structures. And that sets the stage for uh, moving now into a discussion of the entrapment neuropathies uh, of the uh, upper extremities. And so we're going to uh, focus our attention on the most common nerves that are affected, the median nerve, the radial nerve, and the ulnar nerve. And so just remember that the median nerve is largely, uh, largely composed of fibers from C6 through T1 with some inconstant contribution uh, to C5. And the reason there's inconstant contribution uh, to C5 is because by the time uh, we get down to the median nerve, most of the fibers from C5 have already split off. And they've split off into uh, forming the suprascapular nerve, which is almost uh, entirely C5 with, its, with a tiny contribution from C6. Uh, C5 has split off largely into the musculocutaneous nerve. Uh, some, most of it's split off uh, into the axillary nerve. And so by the time we get down to uh, the final branch of the median nerve, there's not much C5 nerve fibers left. But uh, there is inconstant contribution, occasional contribution uh, of a C5 uh, to the median nerve. So therefore, uh, with a C5 nerve root lesion, we're probably not going to see uh, much effect in muscles innervated by the median nerve because there's such a tiny contribution from C5 with an overwhelming contribution from uh, C6 through T1. Uh, the radial nerve is largely comprised of nerve roots from C5 to C8 uh, with an occasional contribution from T1. And then the ulnar nerve is largely comprised of nerve roots from C8 and T1 uh, with also an occasional contribution uh, from C7. Okay, so let's move in now to uh, some of the upper extremity peripheral nerve entrapments.